And it's been two years since AT&T announced its network transformation here in the Dell TI Now studio at TIA 2016 to tell us much more about that. Our John Donovan, he's the Chief Strategy Officer and Group President at AT&T Technology and Operations. And also on the end of our panel here is Susan Johnson. She's Senior Vice President of Global Supply Chain, also at AT&T, and welcome. Thank you, Abe. Thanks for being here. I know you just came off a keynote. How did that go? Um, I didn't fall. <laughs> I got through it. Uh, yeah. You set the it, ball it, low, it went sir. great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I always I always make my own expectations. Uh, <laughs> no, it, it went great. It's uh, it's uh, the crowd has a lot of energy this year. I think people sense that we're in the midst of a, a, a change that's going to be important for the industry, and it's palpable. You can feel it in the casual conversation in the hallway and you can see it with kind of the intensity and lock-in that people are bringing to the sessions. Well, let's talk about that change that's called the network transformation. AT&T sort of announced the commencement of this transformation a couple years back. There's been some challenges, but also successes since then. Can you sort of elaborate on that? Wow. Um, I could give you about an hour's worth on the, the challenges, but I, I think it, if you look at, against reasonable expectations here again, um, this was not a technology-led um, evolution. This was an economic-led revolution where we just couldn't continue to do the things the, the way we were doing them before and continue to provide customers all of the things that technology was enabling for them. And I think really the advent of the iPhone changed not only mobility, it changed networking, it changed everything uh, that, that we do. And so for us, that milestone kind of is the before and after. It's like the Wizard of Oz. When we went from color to black and white, it was that profound. John talked about it on stage. I mean, the data growth, 150,000 percent. Did I get that right, John? You got it. Since 2007. I mean, that's monumental change in growth. Mm -hmm. So obviously, you've got to change something in the dynamics of the network to be able to support that kind of demand. Now, Susan, I wanted to ask you, in light, really in light of the software shift in the industry, how has your relationships with your partners and your customers changed? You know, maybe the first thing I'd point to is I think our relationships have really broadened out to a whole bunch of uh, suppliers that we probably didn't, didn't interact with five years ago. Um, we're interacting more directly with companies that are just doing software coding and um, are not traditional network players. Um, so you'll notice we announced about 10 different, what we call D2 or Domain 2 providers uh, that have been announced over the last two years. So a couple of those in, you'd never see a supplier to AT&T five years ago. Kind of the Brocade or a Metaswitch. Um, so some new suppliers. And then I think as John talked a little bit on stage, it's broadened into a whole new area where we're much more focused on the ecosystem of open source. So not just about how do we buy from providers that are giving us a finished solution, but how do we evolve the ecosystem into the software area with a lot more involvement in open source, which has got to be a critical part of how we're sourcing. I think that the, the newness creates a little bit of anxiety, um, but I think there's something that it offers to everyone. If you're small, it's an open door that might not have been there before. If you did software only, instead of being a bit actor in the play, you get to take a major role. If you're a big company, it has an opportunity to fundament fundamentally reshape how you do your R&D and how you develop products. So there is a, a newness to it that can make you a little worried, but there's a newness to it that can make you really excited. And you know, I think if you focus on the opportunity, um, it's far greater than some of these transition risks and difficulties that it has in changing the way you do business. I think anytime you're moving towards a new technology or a new business model, let's say like network virtualization, it's like steering the big ship. And one example of that is really reskilling your workforce. What's that been like for you? Um, that's probably been the most inspiring part of my job. I mean, uh, I'll give you a quick anecdote. I'm getting on an elevator. There's a woman who's got a big smile. I ask her what she's excited about. She said, I finished my first course on a nano degree. I'm giving it to myself as a birthday gift. Every year I give myself a birthday gift. And um, I said, well, why are you doing it? And her answer shocked me. She said, to inspire my kids. Hmm. So when you look at a, a, a world where technology is moving so fast, you have to be in continuous learning environment. It's, it's amazing to me to have an opportunity 
present itself to change people's lives this way. And it's just remarkable how our employees that have been here 20, 25 years helped build this great company are stepping up now to reskill themselves for the future. I want to ask you uh, and Susan if you want to finish um, the conversation, but I want to ask John one more question about your keynote address. You talked about the impact um, that technologies have um, on fifth generation or next generation technologies, 5G. You talked about software defined networking or NFE as well, and also big data and how they play a role in 5G. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, and I'll ask Susan to jump in, but I, you know, it, it, as if you always think you had enough G's. There were four G's, and now we've got to go to the fifth G. But every technology that we do at AT&T, we're going to take the same approach, which is we're going to look at that technology, and until we know how we're going to do software-defined networking, until we know how the data analytics work, um, and, and until we get our landscape of security and open source figured out, it's not time. So the vintage of all technologies now has to run through that process before we deem it, you know, kind of ready to get into our network. I don't, what would you add to that? Yeah, yeah, just the obvious. Obviously, we've got more information than ever. And how do you turn that information into things that are driving more intelligence of how we look and understand our network and how you take that big data into some new business models is kind of the excitement to think of where we're headed um, with big data as well as NFE. I want to ask you one, one, both one more question. Uh, didn't talk about this before we turned the cameras on, but I thought I'd ask you the sort of the broad brush, 80,000 foot question. How has your um, role in the value chain, um, sort of leading the value chain, changed as um, the, uh, that chain has become much more converged over the last couple of years? And Susan, I'll start with you. I didn't, you, I didn't know there were cameras. He said there weren't cameras. <laughs> <laughs> we're on Apparently camera. there are cameras right. rolling. <laughs> You know, I, I'm going to say that I think we've reached the point at at and I feel really proud of what we're doing in terms of the evolution. My team jokes that I think we're not just on the leading edge, we feel sometimes on the bleeding edge, mm -hmm. uh, because I think we're really seeing where the rubber's meeting the road, to use another analogy in terms of where we're driving this. So we're hitting some pain points and some challenges as we are diving in and really moving to sort of the specifics of where we're headed with virtualization. John talked on stage about the fact that we've got 30% of the functionality be virtualized this year. Mm. That's a huge step up from the less than 6% for last year. So we're really seeing a lot of challenges in it, but I feel good about the leadership role I think we've got in the industry. I, Susan mentioned that where the rubber meets the road, you know, it's what's great about this is it's where also the rubber meets the sky. Mm -hmm. So we kind of have to, it's one of those few things where your you vision you implement, you vision, you implement, and then you adapt and adjust, and it's not a, a structured, organized march, which has been so much the hallmark of this industry. You know, we're making mistakes every day. We're course correcting every day, and that that's exciting. I mean, mm -hmm. when you see a, a vision get deployed six weeks later, it, you know, it's, it's really interesting times, and so, you know, Susan and uh, the whole team at AT&T are so remarkable that um, I'm, I'm just, I feel blessed to be part of it. Well, yeah, T uh, speaking on behalf of TIA, I think um, they really appreciate that AT&T is still leading the charge, again, as our supply chain and value chain becomes much more converged. Um, and a little more uh, complex, if you will. Uh, it was really nice meeting both of you, and thank, thank you for giving us your time. We know you uh, probably have a packed day today, so. Thank you, Abe. Thanks, Thanks for having Thanks for Thanks the Susan. opportunity. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And uh, thank you for joining us at TIA 2016 Network of the Future from the Dell TI Now studio. For more coverage, you can visit us at tinow.org. So long.